This is Mike Bassett and I've made him the best manager the world has ever seen. I've put him in charge of National League Northside Kingsland Town, who are predicted to come fifth this season. Then we're going to simulate Mike Bassett's career and we'll come back around again to check on him. So the question is, will the best manager in the world ever actually win anything? Well, halfway through season one, things are looking promising as Kings Lynn are second in the table, just seven points behind Fylde. For the most part, their season has been pretty good. If they just won in October, then maybe they'd be in a better position, but that October was dreadful. I've got faith that he's gonna turn it around and get them promoted. Or they lose in the playoff final against Darlington with striker Jordan Ponticelli missing a penalty in the 107th minute. Now, annoyingly, I want to click on this penalty to see it, but uh, I can't see any of the match highlights, frustratingly, so uh, we'll never know how he missed the penalty. Kingsland actually fell off to third place with Darlington getting second place and being promoted, so the best two teams in the league ended up being promoted, really. But that should mean that next season, Kings Lynn needs to be looking for the title, which they didn't go on to win. But they did win the playoff final, beating Boston United 2-0 to secure promotion. They actually ended up second in the table, so once again, the top two teams from the National League North have been promoted, and Mike secures his first career milestone. Hopefully the first of many. Season three in the National League is going to be tough. Although I think Mike is going to do a stellar job with them, given that he is the best manager of all time. Although they are predicted to come 23rd, which is not a great sign. But he has guided them to 18th place and safety, securing them in the National League for another season. And with three seasons of data under his belt, we can see his tactical preferences. He likes a 4-2-3-1, playing Tiki Taka with lots of passing, a very attacking mentality, but doesn't like to press and Mark Zonally. He's also managed Kingsland for 161 games, scoring 207 goals, conceding 164 with a 45% win ratio. That is pretty decent, actually. Thing is, he's not moved clubs yet, and I thought by this stage, bigger clubs might be looking at him and thinking he's the man to take their club to the next level. So when will he actually move? Well, it's not in season four because he's still at Kings Lynn Town with actually some of his attributes dropping to 18 out of 20. That might be because every single attribute being 20 out of 20 is higher than 200 out of 200 current ability. So the game's trying to balance him a little bit. He's also guided Kings Lynn Town to back-to-back -to -back 18th places in the table, which is not particularly inspiring. I'm a bit concerned by that. I mean, okay, it's another season in the National League, but Mike needs to be doing better than this if he wants to get a better job somewhere. Season five, and he's still at Kings Lynn Town. I'm getting very concerned about this. Why is he just not moving? Maybe because he's building a legacy at Kings Lynn. He has just come third in the National League Manager of the Year. That suggests to me he might have got promoted. Or maybe it's just a case of massive overachievement. Kingsland came 11th place in the table outside of the playoff places. Maybe this overachievement will get him a better job in a higher division. Or he just stays at Kingsland Town again. I'm very concerned that he's just still here. Uh, and this time Kingsland are 15th. So they dropped off a little bit. Oh, I'm very concerned. Or maybe I shouldn't be. He's finally moved clubs, this time to Sheffield Wednesday. Amazing work. So what division is Sheffield Wednesday? Wednesday in then. No way. No way. He got promoted with Sheffield Wednesday via the playoffs from the National League. How badly has it gone for Sheffield Wednesday? Oh my word, they have been on a decline. They got up to the championship and then got relegated immediately, then a second relegation, quite poor in League 2, then a worse season in League 2, and then relegation. Then Mike took over and has guided them back to the Football League. Ah, okay, so he left at the very end of last season and moved to Sheffield Wednesday ahead of this upcoming season. So he's been there the entire season, came second, was National League Manager of the Year and got promotion. Okay, so it may have taken seven years in non-league football, but he's finally in the Football League. Please do not get relegated in your first season. Okay, well, at the end of season eight, he is still at Sheffield Wednesday. Oh, and they came sixth, which was a playoff place. Obviously, they've lost in the playoffs, so it's Crawley v Fleetwood in the final. But that's pretty impressive. His first season in the Football League gets Sheffield Wednesday into a playoff place. Congratulations, Mike. Oh, they were battered 5-0 on aggregate.
surrogate by Crawley though, so there was no chance of him actually getting through those games, clearly. So in Season 9, I am kind of expecting a promotion. Or maybe a promotion in terms of jobs though, he's now the Notts County manager. So by the looks of things, he departed as a manager of Sheffield Wednesday after agreeing terms with another club in November, so mid-season he moved to Notts County. So where are Notts County? 16th in League One. So actually he's moved upwards into a better league, so that's good going for him actually. But Sheffield Wednesday did go on to win the title in League Two. I'll be honest, I think he would have had a better time if he'd stayed with them, got promoted, and then done better next season in League One with a very good Sheffield Wednesday team. You know what? I was wrong. I was actually wrong. Uh, Notts County have come 14th, whereas Sheffield Wednesday have only just avoided relegation in 20th place. So actually, he did make that right call. He did go to a better team at the right time. But this is the end of season 10. So he's had 10 years of management and in that time played 532 games, scoring 638 goals, conceding 564 with a 41% win ratio. But given that we've hit the 10 year milestone, let's speed things up a little bit. I'm gonna jump five years in the future. And in season 15, Mike Bassett, is the manager of Reading. Oh wow, he's had a very good few years. In 2034, he came second in League One with Notts County, getting them promoted. Had a first half of the season with Notts County in the championship, before Reading came along and said, can we have you as our manager? And guess what he's done with Reading? Got them promoted to the Premier League this past season. So this is the Reading side that came second in the championship, losing out on the title by two points to Leicester and Everton and Millwall face off in the playoff final. No Notts County to be seen in there, so it looks like they've dropped back down into League One, but Sheffield Wednesday have got themselves into the championship. What a tumultuous time it's been for Sheffield Wednesday fans. Oh my word. Reading lost their final game of the season, 1-0 away to Ipswich. Had they won that, they would have won the championship title by a point. Yeah, they were second place on the final day of the season. If they'd won it, they would have gone ahead of Leicester by a point. But Reading were top of the table for a vast majority of the season. At Leicester, by comparison, only got there on the final few days of the season. I want to see how he gets on in his first season in the Premier League. Ah, may maybe we shouldn't have looked. Um, is he still at the club? He got sacked in October for poor positioning. Wow, he got sacked really early on there. I mean, to be fair, he'd only won one Premier League game in that time lost all the other ones so I, I can't I can't blame him really for being sacked but that must have been a really tough job for him to try and win with a very poor Reading side. It's the player's fault not the manager in this situation that's what I'm putting it down to. So he's got his first sacking but to be fair the fact that's taken him 16 years to do is pretty impressive and during that time he's gone from the National League North to the Premier League so surely the sky is the limit for this man now for the rest of his career. So going forward to season 17 He's now the manager of Schalke. He's left England completely and gone to Germany. Although they are only in the Zwei Bundesliga, the second division, and he's only come eighth place with them. But when did he take the job, to be fair? He was hired in October, so he's had basically the entire season with them. So maybe it's not a great position for them. Uh, it nearly was an entire calendar year before he actually got another job, out of a job for a year after Reading let him go, so it took a while to pick a job. Although actually, Schalke were predicted to come 14th this past season, so maybe actually he's really overachieved with them. Let's check how he's getting on midway through next season. Ah, where he's no longer the manager of Schalke, he's the manager of Werder Bremen. Werder Bremen are in the Bundesliga, but oh gosh, oh gosh, right bottom by quite a long way. Mike, have you just committed career suicide here? Because this is like a poison chalice job. I mean, if he pulls it off and avoids getting relegated, he's amazing, but it's not looking good. He's been there since early December, so he's had about two months in charge or so. And, I mean, results have improved a little bit. He's won two games with them in January. They haven't won any games before that, pretty much. Oh, but at the end of the season, he's unemployed. He was sacked after the team got relegated, finishing bottom of the Bundes. Oh, Mike. Yeah, he was a long way off getting them to safety as well. That's tough. So that does go down as his first official relegation. He's had four promotions and not won a single cup or league. He's won a few playoffs, obviously, but they don't count towards that. Not won any of the cups either. So I'll be honest, for nearly 20 years of management, there's not an awful lot to show so far. I am concerned about him now. I'm not quite sure who's going to give him a chance. He might be unemployed for a little while here. So uh, I'm going to go to season 25 now to find out where he is. Oh my word, no way. No way. This is ridiculous. Mike Bassett is the England manager. Ladies and gentlemen, England will be playing 4-4.
for those of you who may have missed the reference with the name Mike Bassett, uh, there's a film that came out in England in 2001 called Mike Bassett, England Manager, where Ricky Tomlinson is the actor. He takes this role of a guy called Mike Bassett, who's like a really crappy manager based in Norfolk, who then becomes the England manager out of nowhere and goes to World Cup with them, essentially. This has actually happened in the game. Oh, wow, okay, so it wasn't long after he left Werder Bremen, he became the Brighton manager first. And by looks of things, that Brighton for a long, long, long time, um, because he left the club in 2046 to become the England manager, I presume after the World Cup then, if that's 2046, but did win a Carabao Cup with Brighton. Wow, okay, so Brighton gave him a chance and he did pretty well. That's his first and only trophy so far. Oh wow, we did really well with Brighton. Uh, they came seventh, seventh, sixth, sixth, and then maybe his first season ninth. No, first season was 15th, I think. Second season ninth, then got them into European positions every single season after that. But I just love the fact this guy's now the England manager. Oh wow, the previous manager was sacked after England got knocked out of the World Cup final, losing it 4-1 to Spain. Oh my gosh, I imagine if he wins the European Championships with England. Oh well, the fact he's now the Valencia manager suggests that might not have happened. Sacked as manager of England following a series of bad... Re oh Mike. Oh Mike, please, please tell me you qualified. Okay, they did qualify for the European Championships. They won their group, beating every single team in the group as well. Oh, they just lost the second round to Serbia. That's not a that's not a great look, to be fair. I can see why maybe they they, they, they sacked him. Have you heard what the crowd is But he picked up the Valencia job in the same month ahead of the brand new season. Has he actually started off with Valencia yet? No, the season's just about to get started. So, okay, let's see how he gets on with Valencia. Oh, Mike, no, come on, Mike. Is this another sacking? Oh, my word, he did not last long. Hired as Valencia manager in July, sacked in December. I mean, to be fair, he lasted longer than Phil Neville, so that's that's something. Okay, well, I'm going to take a big jump into the future now then to season 35. That's about seven years on from where we are right now. Uh, hopefully, things have turned around for him. Oh, okay. Mike Besser is doing pretty well for himself as the Inter Milan manager. Let's see what he's been up to then. After getting sacked as Valencia manager, he had almost two and a half years out of a job until Roma came along and hired him. He stayed there for about a season and a half before leaving to become the manager of Croatia. So he was with Roma for the 50-51 season where they came 11th and then was there for most of the season the following year when they came seventh place. But Croatia came knocking. He joined just after Croatia got knocked out of the European Championships second round to Portugal and then went on a pretty decent run winning plenty of games in the UEFA Nations League. Although 2053 didn't start off very well, didn't win a single game and then decided to leave before he was probably pushed out of a job, I think. But where did he go after Croatia? Well, the answer is Almeria. He took over ahead of the 53-54 season and stayed there for exactly one year, winning the Spanish Cup, only his second trophy. But wow, did guide Almeria to fourth place in the 53-54 season. But after one season with Almeria, he was tempted away by Inter Milan. And amazingly, in his first season with Inter Milan, he won the title. But the most mind-boggling thing about this is that in 35 years, this is his first ever league title. A career that has spanned 35 years, 1,493 games, a 45% win ratio, and it's just one league title. I mean, two cups as well, but three trophies, it's won a decade right now, and that's I'll be honest, that's not great. Okay, I'm taking another leap forward here. We're going to go to season 43, which is the year 2065, and Mike Bassett is a scout for Tottenham. Excuse me? How has this happened? How is he a scout? Ah, his short-term plans are retired from hands-on roles, so he has retired from being a manager. Instead, it looks like he spends most of his days out in Croatia, Bosnia, Albania, North Macedonia, Slovenia, scouting players, for Tottenham. Wow, he spent nearly seven years at Inter Milan, but he left them in 2061 to go to Liverpool. And you know what? In that first season with Liverpool, he went on to win the Europa Conference League. So that's trophy number four for him. But actually this next bit makes me really sad. He was sacked as manager of Liverpool after losing confidence in the dressing room. And that's when he decided to retire 
from management. That's that, that's actually really sad, you know? He, he was a manager for such a long time, a great manager too. But Liverpool players hated him so much, they made him retire. That's actually quite tragic, if I'm honest with you. That, that's, that's upset me a bit there. But what a career he's had. 1,780 games, winning 46% of those matches, and scoring well over 2,260 goals. From humble beginnings at Kingsland Town, he moved on to Sheffield Wednesday and Notts County before getting a break at ready to take him to the Premier League. Once that failed, he went to Schalke and Werder Bremen in Germany, where the experiment abroad didn't work out. He came back to England as a manager of Brighton and won his first ever trophy, the Carabao Cup, before becoming the England manager to get knocked out of the European Championships in the second round. He then went to Spain to Valencia where he got sacked pretty quickly before his second international calling came with Croatia. He had a lovely 18 months there before the pull of Almeria in Spain pulled him and he won his second trophy, the Copa del Rey. After one season with Almeria securing Champions League football, Inter Milan came knocking and what followed was seven years of success at Inter, although there only was one Serie A title in that. Liverpool were the final team in his career where he won a Europa Conference League before the team made him quit football and management forever. You know what, this video has gone on way better than I thought it was going to. I thought genuinely he might retire at the age of like 30, but he's had a long 40 year career as a manager. I am so impressed by that. The real question is though, could he win 100 games in a single season? Because I don't think even the best manager in the world could do that, but I gave it a shot. The video is on screen for you to watch right now.